Next speaker is Honorable Frank Anthony. You have the floor, sir. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I rise to make my contribution to this motion that has been put forward by the Honorable Chief Whip, Ms. Gail Teixeira. Mr. Speaker, Order Number 18 has created a false illusion that Guyanese would be better off if the order is enacted. The sad reality is that the order will impose more hardship and would overtax the already highly taxed citizens of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, when VAT was introduced in Guyana, services and commodities were placed in three main categories. Those that attracted VAT, those that will be exempted from VAT, and those that will be zero rated. Those that are exempted and zero rated were published in Schedules 2 and 1, respectfully. Mr. Speaker, in the 20, 2015 Manifesto under the section, in APNU's 2015 Manifesto, under the section APNU AFC Action Plan, for the first 100 days, they promise, and I quote, immediately implement a phase reduction of VAT and the removal of VAT from food items and other essential items. In the 2017 budget, the Minister of Finance announced on page 80 of his budget speech that he intends to reduce the value-added tax rate from 16 to 14%. Raman McCray, in their report focused on Guyana's national budget 2017, expressed a sense of disappointment they pointed out that the minister is what the minister is proposing differs significantly from what was recommended by Juke Report and the Tax Reform Committee. They said, and I quote, Juke recommended two rates, 16% and 8%, and the Tax Reform Committee recommended 14% and 7%. The minister, in his wisdom, have ignored these recommendations and decided on a minimal decrease from 16 to 14%. The Guyanese public, having been promised a lower rate during the electoral hustlings, were expecting that VAT would be at least maybe 7 or 8%. But I guess this is another of those broken promises. Mr. Speaker, but while the government has grudgingly given the 2% reduction in VAT, they have, resorted, they have resorted to new measures to increase the collection of VAT. These measures include moving items that were zero rated to exempt. The experts have told us that by doing so, GRA would now not have to refund the money to businesses. And we were told by the Honorable Minister Sharma not so long ago that GRA would have received on an annual basis close to 1,500 claims, which amounted to $2.5 billion per year. Well, Mr. Speaker, if the GRA is not going to be refunding the $2.5 billion, then I want to say that that $2.5 billion would be passed on to the consumers. And that is a burden on the consumers. The second measure that they have put in place, Mr. Speaker, is removing items that were already zero rated, and they have now added 14% VAT on them. And we know some of those items. They include electricity, which was zero. Now it is attracting a 14% VAT. Water, which was zero, now it is attracting a 14% VAT. And then, of course, there's a long list of food items and school items and so forth. The net effect of these measures is that the government will exceed the current amount that it collects on VAT. Rama McRae report again. In their analysis, they noted 
that VAT collection are expected to rise by an average of 25% on imports as well as domestic supply. And going to the minister's budget, we would see that in 2016, the government collected close to $36 billion, and they have projected in 2017 to collect $45 billion from VAT. This is an additional $9 billion. So it is clear that implementing these measures of charging, of changing items from zero rated to exempt and from zero rated to 14% will create more hardships for everyone in this country. That is why, Mr. Speaker, we are against the amendment of these schedules. Mr. Speaker, under the current law, most of the health supplies and health services were zero rated. You had glucometers, glucose test machines, as we call them, needles, glucose blood strips. All of these were zero rated. Hearing aids were zero rated. Medical supplies, including making diagnosis, treatment, prevention of disease, including mental health, they were all zero rated. Opto optometric services and spectacles prescribed for human eye and the visual system were zero rated. Medical supplies, services, including those provided by qualified medical practitioners, a registered hospital, maternity home, nursing home, convalescent home, clinical laboratory, all of these were zero rated. Preparation of oral dental hygiene, including denture, fix, fixative, paste, powders, were all zero rated. Vitamins, minerals, tonics for medical or health supplement use, some of them were zero rated. And of course, Mr. Speaker, wheelchairs were zero rated. When the minister read his budget in November, we saw a lot of these items being removed. At page 101, under the caption, health and medical services and supplies, the minister good life budget displayed only two items that were exempted. And these were glucometers and clutches. All the rest of it were moved from zero rated and they attracted a 14% VAT. With a stroke of his pen, the minister and his government have imposed 14% taxes on the sick, the deaf, the visually impaired, and the disabled people of our country. In short, these measures have attacked the most vulnerable amongst us. In the budget debates that follow, speaker after speaker have exposed the government's callousness and insensitivities. The citizenry was appalled by the so-called good life measures in the budget. And they have called on the government to withdraw these measures. And it seems that the government has grudgingly agreed to remove a few of these measures. And now we see in the latest schedule that prescription drugs have now gone back, and that's zero rated. And some of the OTC have now gone back, and that's zero rated. But not all the items that were zero rated have gone back. And we would like to see all of those items go back to being zero rated. And not only in medicines and, and health services, we want to see the same for education, agriculture, sports, and the many food stuff that was previously zero rated. Mr. Speaker, under the current proposals, the new schedules for health and services, hearing aids, Previously zero rated, now is 14%. Wheelchairs, previously zero rated, now 14%. Dental supplies, 
previously zero rated, now 14%. Medical consultation. When you go to see a doctor now, zero, previously zero rated, 14%. Surgical operations, or whatever surgical procedures you have to get done, previously zero rated, now 14%. Hospitalization. If you're recuperating on a bed in a private hospital, that was previously zero rated, now that's 14%. Maternity services. If you're giving birth to a child in a hospital, previously zero rated, now that's 14%. Home-based care services, previously zero rated, now 14%. Laboratory services, previously zero rated, now 14%. Imaging services, whether it's x-rays, CAT scans, ultrasound, previously zero rated, all of that now is attracting 14%. Mr. Speaker, we are all aware that many persons try to access these services in the public sector. Unfortunately, there are many times when you go to the public sector and these services are not available. So what will happen? People would have to go to the private sector to access these services. Many times when you need a laboratory test at our public hospitals, they are out of reagents, so you cannot get important diagnostic tests that are required for the management of these patients. And what the doctors will do? They'll send them to the private sector so that they can get these services done. I just want to give a few examples. When you have to do a glycated hemoglobin, very often, this is to look at people who have diabetes, very often you can't get that test done in the public sector. So you have to send them to a private laboratory. That cost is right now about $5,000. Then you have to add the 14% VAT. Persons who have enlarged prostate and they have to go and do a PSA, when they go to the private sector because they can't get it done in the public sector, you have to pay $6,000 for the test plus the 14% VAT. Ouch. Ouch. Breast cancer testing. Some of the latest testing for breast cancer, the BRCA1 and 2, if you're going to do a comprehensive test in the private sector, they have to take the sample and send it abroad. That would cost around $700,000. And of course, a 14% VAT on that. And that's just a couple of examples. There are many more. And tests in the private sector would range from $1,000 to, to as much as $800,000 for some of these tests. Where are the poor people of this country going to get that kind of money to do these tests. And it's not being provided by the public sector. It's not being provided by the public sector. And if you read our constitution, you would see that health care is a right for every single Guyanese. Yet, we can't get it in the public sector. But now we have to go to the private sector and add another burden of 14% on it. Diarrhea. Mr. Speaker, Diarrhea. patients with, su with suspicious tumors that had biopsy, right now if you send those biopsy to the public lab, it will take months to get the results. I know of one patient who had his biopsy done and it was sent to the... I remember the Speaker is very generous in his insistence on relevance and staying close to the motion which is before the House. I merely remind you of that. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Laboratory service, as I previously said, it's now you have to pay 14% VAT on those services. Biopsies which you cannot access in the public health system, and you have to wait months to get your result. And I know a specific case 
where a patient, while waiting for the results so that the doctors can treat him, died. Now, if that patient had money, they could have gone to the private sector, paid $200,000 for a biopsy, and you now have to pay 14% on that. Mr. Speaker, CAT scans. I remember you have to get close to the motion. You have to get close to the motion. All right, sir, I rule you out of order and proceed to the next speaker. We have to get close to the motion. We are getting a repetition of arguments that were presented here. I'm simply asking for better use of our time. So please, honorable member, get close to the motion. Mr. Speaker, we are talking about VAT, and if, sir, you believe that I am not close to the motion, in talking about these zero-rated items, in talking about how much burden it's imposing on patients that have to access the health system, well then, sir, I don't know what else would be closer to the motion. Right now, sir, CAT scans, CAT scans are not available at the Georgetown Public Hospital. If you want to do a CAT scan, and a lot of times the doctors over there recommend them, you have to go to the private hospital, and they would cost about $60,000, dollars plus 14% VAT now. And there are a long list of procedures, Mr. Speaker. People are wondering now whether they'll have to pay for dialysis, VAT and dialysis, and perhaps the minister, when he speaks, he would address those concerns. Frank. But, Mr. Speaker. I remember. I remember, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand on um, standing order 40A to um, correct misinformation which was just given to this House by the honorable member on the floor. When, when machines. Or, I remember yes. we have to not make a speech. I'm not making a speech, sir. Let us state what it is, but please proceed. Let us state what sir, it is. Sir, I was just going to indicate that while the, the members spoke of persons going to the public hospital and are being asked to go and seek medical services outside, what he failed to say to the House and to the nation is that those expenses are subsidized by the government. I thank the honorable member. Honorable member, please, please continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the honorable minister for the point that she has made. However, however, there are many instances when a lot of tests that are ordered and they go to the private sector, they cannot it's not paid for by the public sector. Dialysis. Right now, Mr. Speaker, they have put a limit on how much sessions a person who needs dialysis can get. And, and that, it's not paid for fully. There's a limit. And I think that limit is about 30 sessions. But maybe the minister can correct that. CAT scan. Yes, the government has given a small subsidy. However, you still have to pay for CAT scans in the private sector because it is not available in the public sector. Though so the minister was making a clarification, but the government is not paying the full cost for the procedure. I remember address your remarks to the the chair, and I will again ask the honorable member to get closer to the motion. Illustrations are fine, but then we can overdo it. So please assist by getting closer to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the measures that were outlined in this order and that was outlined in the last budget, that we can call the good life budget. These measures have done a lot of bad things for the people of this country. And I do hope 
Mr. Speaker, that the government will ease the pressure on the Guyanese people by reverting all the previously zero rated and exempted item back to its original status. I implore all my colleagues to be a little bit more compassionate to the deaf, to the visually impaired, to the disabled, to the sick, and to the vulnerable amongst us. Let us work together to stop this sick tax. Withdraw order number 18. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Honourable Member for his statement.